Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, today we have Futures Trader 71, uh, Morad Askar. Uh, you probably know who he is. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, trading order flow uh, in the context uh, and getting on the right side of trades by understanding the narrative and then use order flow and bookmap to fine tune entries. So risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, let me give a brief introduction here of uh, uh, FT71. He's been trading for over 25 or 20 years. Uh, he started uh, his own prop shop uh, until 2003, uh, and then focused um, uh, online uh, on, with online traders. Um, he's a recognized pioneer uh, in the use of volume profiling. He's currently the head uh, trader and director at Conversion Trading, a virtual prop trading environment uh, for career. Um, for professional career professional traders. He is the founder of EdgeClear, an innovative brokerage designed for online traders. Uh, and then FT has been using Bookmap since its uh, initial release um, more than six or about six years ago or so. So uh, anyway, uh, if you're interested in contacting FT, uh, here is all of his contact information, his websites for both training and for the brokerage. Uh, his Twitter, his YouTube, his, his uh, email. Uh, and then if you're interested in some special offerings uh, for Bookmap from FT71, here's the affiliate link here. Don't worry, I'm gonna cut and paste all of these links into the chat for you so you can click on the link directly and go to the websites or whatever it is that, that you're interested in. Uh, let me turn it right over to FT. Thank you, Bruce, and hello, everyone, wherever you are. I hate to say, um, I don't want to say good morning because it, it is here in Chicago, but it may not be where you are. Um, so today we're going to focus on um, the the using order flow in terms of context. Okay, so we've I've come on, and I'm sure many many guests have come on to speak about Bookmap and talk about the nuts and bolts of what they do, how they see things within Bookmap. What I want to do is take a more broad view on things. Uh, the market's currently doing what I had expected and talked about in the pre-market uh, video that I release called the Trader Byte. Uh, and there's not much here for me to, to trade off of at the moment. I want to remind everyone that derivatives trading is not suitable for all investors and uh, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Here's what I'm going to cover today. Uh, I'm going to make this as quick as possible. And if you have questions, it is best that you type them in as soon as you think of them. If I'm being unclear or if I've said something that's throwing you off, just ask and uh, we'll do our best to address it as we move along and keep that kind of a part of the conversation. Uh, what I'll cover today is just a brief overview, uh, just a brief talk about what the typical online trader experience is. Uh, I'm suspecting that many here are still trying to figure out what they need, what tools they need, and what they need to know in order to trade futures. I'll discuss briefly why I prefer futures over other instruments, uh, what we need to do to maintain a sustainable approach. Uh, the market is a story. We'll talk about the narrative of the market and then talk about what pieces will likely go into um, uh, the pieces that we need to put together that translate into what I call the tip of the spear, which is book map, right? So let's take, I like analogies, even with my prop traders, uh, I used to get made fun of a lot with my crazy analogies, but think of this as it's, it's a new day and we are hunters. This is our, this is our profession. We go out and hunt and Bookmap and the version that I use called CT Bookmap, you can find it at ctbookmap.pro, including the special offers and whatever else. Again, ctbookmap.pro. The Bookmap is my spear. It is, uh, or if you like to use a bow and arrow, it is, it is my arrow. It is the thing that I need to uh, 
to to pull up and zoom in for the point of execution or the point of releasing the arrow. And so let's put that into context because it's very easy to go and get a demo or trial a book map or subscribe to book map. And then all of a sudden there are all these areas that appear to be um, opportunity areas. And, and that's okay. There are people who trade like that where, you know, that's how I started my career as a high volume scalper. I used to do about 3,000 sides a day um, on, on regular days, a lot more on busy days. So I was a very, very busy trader. So I, I basically was a market maker across several products, DAX, Eurostox, uh, ES, Crude, uh, Bund. And, and I've moved away from that approach quite a bit since 2005. I started using a book map when it was pre-released in 2014. I don't recall, but it was around 2014 when it was in development. Uh, so I've been using this product for six years or so. But the goal here is to uh, really break things down. So let's, let's start with that. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you is, one second. is this uh some of you i don't know how many of you are familiar with why let me ask you um have who here just type in your chat box in front of you who here's never watched a trader bite or doesn't have a clue who i am just type in me or something like that you want to do that let's make this a little bit more interactive okay it's fair it's got to be many more of you um so I do this video every day. It's a pre-market video. Uh, we're on episode 1,843. It gets about 1,200 views on YouTube and about seven to 800 views on Periscope, which is the Twitter-based um, live streaming uh, uh, feed. This is a free thing. Uh, I've been doing it for so long. And it is something I used to do in my prop shop where we just, before the market opens, uh, we used to just be in the room, everybody's doing their homework and they get a little kind of a prep sheet and you know all the traders get a prep sheet and then I would talk through the market and how I'm seeing things. Those of you, those, of the, those traders that wanna listen, listen. Those who don't just have their headsets on with their newsfeed and they're doing their own thing. Today, today's uh, today's uh, trader bite discussed how yesterday played out as expected, mostly. So, what I do during this trader bite is I replay the prior day. So let me show you. So I, you know, I show what happened, what I expected the prior day. The green is the primary scenario, or the the most expected play of the day. That's the green part. Uh, the pink is the second most expected play of the day. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I have a, a third play. Let me see if I put one in here. I think I had scenario three. No, I didn't. Uh, I might have a third play, like when we're out of balance or trading outside of the prior day's range, I have a third play. Uh, and that's usually more aggressive because the market's out of balance. The response is likely to be more aggressive. So you can see that for yesterday, this is reviewing yesterday's action. Uh, in today's video, I'm reviewing yesterday's action. And and I'm saying, hey, do we expect it a pullback and then a push? We expected it to go to 3308 and a quarter and pull back to, to below 3300. And then after that, I go into what it actually did, and you can see it opened, it tested higher, just like 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 I expected pre-market. This is reviewing yesterday, this morning. I know that's confusing, but you know it. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for the market to respond, and I'm looking for it to go to 3308 and a quarter. See 3308 and a quarter up here, or half. The market went to 3309.50, and then it dropped below 3300 to close. So I'm simply holding myself accountable and saying, look, when Tuesday morning started at about 8 a.m. Chicago time, 9 a.m. Eastern, which is when this video takes place, this live stream takes place, here's what I expected. And then I come back, I came back this morning, you can see the date's the 23rd, which is this morning, 
I came back this morning and said, okay, here's what I expected, here's what it did, and I go over what it did, why or why, uh, why it worked and why it didn't work and so on and so forth. Why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this to say that you need a, you need to understand the overall picture. So let's take a step back for a moment and go back to my slide here, uh, which isn't coming up. Oh, yeah, there it is. Um, let's go back to, to, for a second to my slide. What is the typical online trader's experience? The typical online trader's experience has nothing to do with what I just showed, which is what I've been doing as a professional trader for ages. Since I stopped scalping in volume, I started to create this, do this routine every morning. It's almost like a religious thing that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and, and what the online trader does is they come in and they get their platform, whatever it is, you know, whatever, rhythmic or uh, think or swim or trade station or whatever you have, and they just see a lot of stuff. They see these charts, they see these numbers, they may have copied someone else's stuff and it's just like all these blinking lights and everything else, or they jump into book map and they see these dark and light lines and they see all these fancy things everywhere. This is my book map screen. I actually usually view it in color, but uh, we'll do monochrome for today. It just simplifies things for me. At least I don't have to mess with the colors. And it's so easy to say, okay, um, I don't know what I'm doing and I need to do something because you know what? I'm useless if I'm sitting here doing nothing. So look, there's a line at 32.98 and a quarter. So I'm just going to I'm just gonna sell that. I'm just gonna offer that out. Okay, I just offered one lot in the micros or whatever. And it just becomes more of a gambling experience. Um, and, and when it works, what we do is we are reaffirm to ourselves that this is actually working, that I've got this. And when it doesn't work, it knocks us into this, should I be trading? Is this gambling? Is this, and we end up in this very volatile process, which ultimately grinds us down to the point where we just start throwing risk out and start taking ex excessive um, ex we start to trade excessively, taking excessive risk and so on, because you know what? I don't know what I'm doing anyway. I might as well enjoy the process, which is a very poor way to approach trading. Everybody's happy to take your money if that's the attitude that we're gonna have about trading. So my goal here today is to talk about how do we, instead of pulling up book map and talking about what it does and how I use it, which I've done in the past. There are many, many videos um, at, at on Bookmap site and YouTube channel that I'm on where I go through like some technical detail. I felt that it's really important since we're coming into the more active part of the year, coming into this this October uh, period uh, before we go into the lull, uh, the holiday lull. I just want to make sure you understand what's expected of you because uh, because uh, most people just don't have, don't give themselves the time or have the chance to um, to really see what's going on. So the first thing, the the first thing a, a typical online trader's experience is, is to get a tool and just want to click. I've got money in an account. I know what my margin is. I know what my commissions are. I'm just going to click and I'm going to see. I'm going to test my luck and this is not, and, and the reason I have this experience is because since about 2008, while I was running my prop shop, I was also spending a lot of time online and, and became, um, became engaged with the, with the FinTwit, with the Twitter community, uh, and, and started to get a following because I was basically breaking things down to what you really need, which is the conversation we're having currently. What do you really need? in order to extract money out of the market. Again, past performance is not necessarily indicative and you have to do your own homework and figure out your own approach. And that's the thing, you cannot copy someone else. There is no way to copy someone else. So just because I've watched somebody who's been hunting for a long time, follow this particular path to this particular particular creek 
and then sit there for a, a, an undisclosed amount of time. And then finally, they disappear and then they come back with whatever prey they're, they're hunting. Doesn't mean that if I followed the exact footsteps, went to the same creek, sat there for two hours like they did, that I would do the same thing. I actually have to understand the, um, you know, what's in that area. Is, is this the right place to hunt for the things that I'm looking for? Is there enough of a population here? Is there an edge to being, to hunting in this particular area of the forest versus another? Um, what is the habit of the prey uh, that I'm, that I'm after? What, you know, what point does it go and, and look for water to, to uh, hydrate itself so that I can hunt it and things like that. And really, uh, most people try to mimic someone. Don't try to mimic someone. Don't try to mimic me. What you have to do is get an understanding of what's going on. And then, because of your understanding, now you come up with your own unique approach. If your approach is not unique, it is likely to not have an edge. And if it does have an edge, that edge is not robust and it's likely to be blunted very quickly. You know, so like a moving average crossover might work in a certain environment, but you'll get chopped to pieces and you'll run your account down to zero in, in, in other conditions. And unless you understand the market that you're trading, throwing two moving averages and trading the slope of those averages or crossover isn't gonna get you anywhere. So first things first, we want, so that's the online experience. You go away, you think you kind of figured it out, but you've run out of money, you go to work or put another stake together, come back, subscribe to a bunch of software, which is needed. Those are the tools that we need to hunt with. Um, and then repeat the process, except get just a tiny bit closer, but for a huge expense and a lot of time. What I'd like you to do is take, consider a different approach. Consider that the market is one long, big, long, continuous story, okay? The market just constantly kind of evolves. Uh, this chart here, this chart here is simply a, uh, 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 this is the ES, it is what I call the composite chart. Each bar is the pit session bar uh, for the day. And it's, you know, we can see how it's moving up and down and up and down, up and down, up and down. We could see how the the pandemic low, you know, took us from all time highs uh, in February, brought us to lows in March. And then we've rallied like crazy since then to new all time highs. And as soon as we made all time highs, we've rolled over and here we are in a corrective phase of the market and everybody has access to this chart. You know, you go to a daily chart on pretty much any platform and you will get this sort of thing, okay? I don't need to explain what the little pieces are, bits and pieces of the chart are, but this is generally what everybody looks at in terms of what the narrative is. And this is where we start. We start with a bigger time frame, except that I apply volume profiling to what I see. And the reason I apply volume profiling is because one price is not the same as another price. And the thing that makes one price different from another price is how much participation took place in between, uh, uh, among those prices. For example, uh, if we look at what has happened over the last couple of days, let's zoom in you'll find that the market tends to move from high volume node to low volume, to low volume node, to high volume node, to low volume node. So how am I supposed to do this? Uh, how, how is it that I do this trader bite every day and I talk about what are likely targets? It doesn't always get to what I expect. It doesn't actually do what I expect all the time, but it gets pretty close. And if it doesn't, that's information that I can use as well. So you can see as we dropped from the all time high, we paused at this 3360 area. This 3360 is, is, is the most traded price from the gap up on uh, August 3rd to the all time high. It is the most traded price. We came back to it, we chopped around with it, chopped around it, and then we broke lower and we moved to the next 
balance area's most traded price. That price is 32.1675. Recall the low of two days ago was 32.1775. A, a, a new person might look at that and say, but you said it should, it, the, the number is 32.1675. It stopped at 32.1775. What, why does that make you correct? The thing to note here is we're not sitting here looking for perfection. Trading is messy. Remember that. Trading is messy. We're operating in zones and ranges. The S&P currently has about a three and a half point harmonic rotation or the ebb and flow, the ebb and flow in a one minute period of the S&P is about three and a half points. Okay, so that's, uh, what is that, 15, 14 ticks, 14 ticks, and we missed the balance low by four ticks. That's pretty much spot on for this product. So we want to form, understand what it has done in the big picture. We tested one big, let me pull up the pens here because you're probably wondering what is this guy going on about. So we've tested one big area we've tested this high volume node right here this black line and it's made up of everything all the volume accumulated from june to august because we were in balance in that phase then we gapped up we broke that balance and we ran up to new all-time highs and formed a new high volume node right up here okay and what we did is we failed from the high came back, we chopped around the high volume node, this area, we chopped around it, which is completely expected because if we like that price, then we're gonna trade a lot at that price. If we trade a lot at that price, we create a high volume node or a, an area with a lot of volume. And all I'm doing here is showing, accumulating volume at price. And so if we like that price, then a lot of chop and a lot of churning is gonna happen. If we fail to hold that price and we break away, we're likely to move to the next most accepted price down below. Once we test that next most accepted price, and if we don't just slosh around and fall through, then we are likely to move up and we are likely to rotate back to 33, 60, 50 in the December contract. That's what this price is, okay? And I have these prices memorized because I I understand the story so well, almost like if you're watching Harry Potter and you've watched, every, you've read every single book, you can kind of see where the story may go, right? You might, you you can kind of, to a, within a reason, predict what is likely to happen next. Uh, Harry Potter lost this thing and therefore he needs to recover it. In order to recover it, he's got to go through these, these tunnels with the spiders and do this and that. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but my kids are. And so I can, within reason, predict what is likely to happen next. And what the market generally does is it moves from high volume node to vo low volume node to high volume node to low volume node to high volume node, to low volume node, and so on. And it does this and it goes back and forth and its goal is to seek balance. It's to seek balance. It's trying to find, the market's job is not to take your money, is not to run your stops. Those are just little gimmicks within the market action. What the market's trying to do is it's trying to find balance. I'm gonna translate that into book map at the end. I know you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna book map webinar here, why are you talking about volume profiling and showing us this chart? Show us book map. But I'm gonna translate this to book map in a way that will help you become more effective using the tool and also help you uh, to not over trade by using book map as a tool. And so with that, I expect and I anticipated after, after Monday was done, Yesterday was supposed to be a test of Monday and a push higher above 3,300. And the prediction was 3,308. It went to 3,309. 3,308 quarter went to 3,309 half. And you can verify that. This is not hindsight 2020 because you can verify that by watching yesterday's YouTube video that was done before the market opened at 9 a.m. Eastern. 
and verify what it did against what the market said. And so this morning, again, this morning, so the the activity that's supposed to take place is it's, it's likely to balance here and it's likely to rotate up to the 3340s and then ultimately come back to 3360 if it continues to drive. So that's what we call the narrative. That is the story, okay? Why it happens, you know, is it because SoftBank was involved with uh, these this gamma trade and options that forced market makers to cover their calls by buying stock and causing this massive uh, and ridiculous rally in the NASDAQ. And it doesn't matter. It I don't care why. My job is not to know why. Now, if I was working at CNBC and I was a broadcaster, if I wrote a newsletter or something, an analysis, I would be concerned with the why, but I don't really care about the why. What I care about is what price is trading and how much is trading at that price. That's it, because the market is going, although not perfect, it's not a perfectly informed and a perfectly efficient market, it gets pretty close. It automatically reflects all of the thoughts that go into what's happening into price and volume tells me how much I like it or how much I don't like it or how much I agree with it versus how much I don't agree with it. That's where volume profiling comes into play. Uh, you know, and for those of you who are confused, I cover this stuff all the time uh, at Convergent. And I've been talking, there are hundreds of uh, YouTube uh, webinars and so on that you can watch uh, online for free. Uh, but this becomes the, my understanding of the auction. So, uh, you know, most of you ha rent, ha are renting an apartment or buying and selling a house uh, or have owned a house and have sold a house. Think of it that way. You, when you speak to your realtor, your realtor is going to talk. They're not going to talk about the technical features of the house that you're selling versus the technical features of the houses next to it uh, to give you comparables. Your, your realtor is going to advise you on whether or not it's a good time to sell your house by looking at the overall inventory of the market, uh, the prices that are being accepted. Is the average, the median home price in your area rising? Is it falling? Uh, what are interest rates doing? How easy is it to get a mortgage? Um, you know, the cost of money, all these things come into play and then your realtor will look at your home, will do a walkthrough and will say, you know what, we need to repaint this wall. We need to do this. We need to get all of your old cruddy gross furniture out of here and, and rent some furniture to show the house so we can get the best price. That's the execution phase. So the realtor is looking at the big picture. They're looking at the narrative. What is the story of what the market has gone through and where are we today? So let's narrow that down. So once we look at the overall picture, we look at what has happened the prior day. So that's where this comes in. One second. Uh, let me find, okay, here we go. So once we look at what it did yesterday, and then we look at, so this is what it did yesterday. So I'm reviewing what it did yesterday. Now I'm looking at what it's done this morning. So this was, this here is yesterday, Tuesday. This is what has happened in the extended trading hours. We see that the market took out the, the high of yesterday, put in an overnight high at 1975, which corresponds with the key 1775 area. That's what this stock zone is. That's what this stock zone is right here. This, this gray, these gray lines are called stock zones. They're, they're lines I put up and update um, uh, at least once a day. Uh, these are the areas that I expect the market to react at. So you can see the market topped out. You can see the market topped out at yesterday's 3308 uh, quarter stop, stock zone. And then when it pushed through the overnight high, uh, yesterday's high, it topped out at the 1725 stock zone. So, so I understand that these, that my zones are still strong and they're still quite effective. So I need to lean on that. And then I come in and I look at it and I say, I see that the market has attempted to push higher, but really it is coming back 
to the point of control of the overnight session, it's holding steady. Okay. And then based on that information, based on that information, we move forward. I look at the I look at book map, I look at CT book map and look at the features of the order flow. So I'm looking, I'm describing this. I do this almost, I show book map almost every day in this video because I'm narrowing down the idea or the story to what, what has executed in the overnight session. And then I move forward to the narrative of today. So I've used up a good half hour to get you to this point. These are today's scenarios. You can go and view these. Just go to youtube.com, look, look up, uh, search Futures Trader 71, and you will see that these are the scenarios for today. The initial scenario is to push higher and to sell off. We are currently selling off, right? Uh, the secondary scenario is to sell off immediately, but then we'd get an impulse up and it will start to migrate towards this 3340 area if it cannot hold the 1775 from this morning. The third scenario is it attempts to push higher, fails, and then does an open test drive. And the drive is likely to take us to 8375. This is where we are now. We have, we, we, we've kind of driven this morning, 8375 expecting the market to chop around in here and then expecting it to fall to 7050, which was a key figure from yesterday and the night before. So 7050 becomes scenario three's key, uh, key test price. Okay, great. Now, once, so that's coming into, coming into um, the session, those are the ideas for the day. Then the market opens and we look at what did it give us? Okay, what it gave us, let's switch this to a four Renko, which is what I normally use. What it gave us is it opened at the extreme of the prior day. So this is the profile of the prior day. This chart does not include overnight. It only shows, it only shows um, what's happened during the day session. So the blue pro profile is always the day session. Orange is the entire session. The yesterday we opened right at 33.09 and a quarter this morning, which was yesterday's high, we opened right dead nuts on yesterday's high. We tested down to 04 half, we went to 11 quarter, held sideways. So that's a, it's an open auction, it's a two-way auction, it's chop, and it, attempt, it attempted to break out. So this would have been scenario two. It attempted to break out, and what I'm looking for now is it starts to break out, then I'm looking for uh, on the heat map, I'm looking for a bid to show up below it at about 33.10 to 33.09.50 for it to pull back to that area and then start to push 12.50. And that's what we call initiative buying, meaning the market is not liking yesterday's prices and yesterday's area that it accepted or traded at. And it's starting to move away from that price which is not our expectation. Our expectation today, again, was that we would likely move back into yesterday's range. Remember, that's what was predicted in this morning's trader bite. Test higher and fall back into the prior day's range, the blue. So we're looking to fall back into the prior day's range. And that's so scenario one and three, look for reversion or pull back into the prior day's range. And we, scenario one says, it's not likely to be very aggressive when it does. Scenario three says it's probably gonna be aggressive and it's likely to um, be a trending kind of move down, right? Scenario two is the one that tests down and then starts to break higher and run away. So here's what has happened so far. We have tested up, We've, we're solidly back into the prior day's range. So what is the primary target as we push into the prior day's range? So now seeing as it's going uh, moved into the prior day's range and is not pushing back up. In other words, it's not turning up, getting above VWAP, the day session VWAP and back out of yesterday's range. Now I'm eliminating, I'm removing from the table any buying. So pay attention here because people tend to want to trade from both sides no matter what the narrative no matter what's going on, they wanna trade from both sides. And so 
I, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to trade in the direction that the narrative tells me the market's willing to go. Or I want to trade in the direction that facilitates the easiest returns for my risk. There's always risk. A trade, any trade at any random time may not work. I know that. It's okay. It's okay. I accept this as a trader as, as, as it's the reality of the market that the outcome, the next time I click and get into a trade, the, outlo the outcome is completely random for that particular trade, period. But what I want is what I want to go for as a professional, as someone who wants to trade sustainably, and I'm, I'm supporting this by getting the best data feed, getting the best analytics package, getting the best order flow package, which I believe is bookmap, right? And I'm, I'm supporting the, I'm giving myself the best chance. And so the best chance for me is to just look for shorts. So that eliminates the anxiety of missing the bottom. That eliminates the possibility that I might be trying to catch the bottom and losing my ass doing that, which is a very uh, common thing for new traders to do. So now we're moving into the area of what we need to maintain a sustainable approach. What you need to maintain a sustainable approach is an understanding that the market is an auction and an understanding for your particular product, whether it's crude, NQ, bun, bobble, shots, uh, Euro stocks, CAC 40, whatever it is. I don't care, NASDAQ, YM, RTY, you name it. Whatever that product is, understand the narrative. So you've been, if you've been away on a week for vacation, go back to the month, go back a month or at least two weeks, right? Go back to the week that you missed and the week before and play back the market on your bigger time frame chart. I like to use 15 minutes for that or you know, some sort of a, a point and figure chart and play it bar by bar and look at what it did. Okay, what did it form? What, what areas did it accept price in? The way I can learn how it accepted prices or rejected prices is the volume profile. Acceptance means a lot of volume occurred at that price. Rejection shows that very little volume occurred at that price. And we walk that, I walk that chart forward, bar by bar, 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 until the present. And the goal here is to understand the narrative. The market story is what I'm after. Because as a trader, I'm trading the story, not the indicator, not the collision, not the what Joe Schmo said, I'm trading the story. The big traders in the world who are not fully automated or algorithmic are coming in and their biggest edge is their understanding of their market, right? Like Bruce Lee said, I don't fear the man who has done a kick, uh, has done 10,000, uh, styles of kick once, practice the kick, 10,000 kicks one time. I don't fear that man. This is Bruce Lee. He says, I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And that's what we want to be. We want to understand our market better than any other participant we can possibly lose money to. So I don't need to be the best, but I can't be the last. I can't be the person that comes in and wakes up, shows up, and then just trades from the gut. I don't want to be that. I want to be the person who really understands this market. I know that if I don't make money today, it is okay. It doesn't tell me I, I don't have to quit. I'm not a terrible trader. It just means that I didn't have alignment. I followed my plan and it just didn't pay off. And that's normal. I know that tomorrow I'll probably come in and do something with it or the day after, the day after that. And the reason I know that is because I understand my market better than most other people or many other people. You know, it, it, think of the joke. The way to not get eaten by a bear is not to be the fastest runner. It's to be faster than the slowest runner. I'm sure you've heard that, right? So our goal is not to be the greatest trader. Let's just be modest and realistic here because to be the greatest trader requires a level of commitment that most people cannot pull off. 
Our goal is to be better than others. And most people on the, in the online world don't do the work, don't understand the market, aren't uh, figuring out the alignment they have with the market. And so now we want to break down the pieces. So once we have determined what we're likely to trade, what we want to trade, it boils down to where I engage. And I'm using Bookmap to engage, right? So I'm trading right off a of Bookmap. I'm using the rhythmic feed. I believe it to be the best feed out there. And I'm a professional. I've used TTX Trader. I've used C CTS. I've used, for a period, I even used TradeStation. And that was really terrible for direct market access on futures. I use Rhythmic. It gives me the full depth. I can see where something is bid or offered as far as the eye can see. I can zoom out and I have a live depth, full market depth. I have MBO data, which means that I have all the details that the professional shops get. I can see that there's a nice offer here at 32.98 and a quarter that's been sitting here a long time. I cannot recall that. It's not possible for me to recall that level of information by looking at you know, the tape and the classic 10 offer, 10 bid dome. I can just look at the heat map and see that this person has been here a while. This order has been here a while. And as long as it doesn't go from white to, to, to grayish, to gray, to dark, to black, as the price moves up to it, and if I want to, if I believe that I have a reason to sell in this area, then I know I can lean on that price. So this is where Bookmap shines. And so once I know that I'm looking for shorts, what's the next thing I need to do? I need to determine what areas are going to give me an edge for my execution. And I need to, to monitor how, my, how the market's rotating versus the size of my stop, right? So harmonic rotations, again, if, if for example, uh, I sell short and I only, I only provide three ticks for a stop, when the market is sloshing around in six point ranges because it's extra volatile, I'm just, I'm donating those three or four ticks in my stop with slippage, I'm donating that money. I might as well just pull that money out of my account and send it to my favorite charity because that's what's gonna happen. So I need to be aware of how's the market flowing, right? How is it flowing? It's got pretty wide ranges. It's, it's hitting about five points at the moment and I need to assess whether or not that's too much for my account size because I don't wanna risk too much on a single trade. But I also know that I'm gonna lean short today. So you can see we opened way up here, pretty crowded. We finally break through. Areas of interest currently are right here. This, in fact, I, I missed it. Let me just do this again. See the zipper here, which coincides with this offer. The top of the zipper is right there. So for that trade, I need about five points of range, five points stop. I have liquidity right here to lean against. You can see that liquidity on the, in the dome right here, okay? The next areas that I wanna be interested in is are we gonna remain stuck right here? It's really hard for me to draw with a mouse. So this is another area where the market battled. You can see those red and blue dots. And by the way, my dots are filtered. I filter everything. I don't wanna see a lot of noise. So I, I'm filtering my dots by 50. I turn off the smart clustering. I just wanna see the dots for where they are. But I filter by 50 lots. And it tells me that there's a fight here. So there's a fight right here. I need to pay attention to this area. I've got a bottom. So this area resulted in a collision, a pop to the next, this is the next zipper right here. This is the next zipper above. The market has tested the extreme of that collision. Let me choose another color. Let me do, just do a nice loud color for you, pink. So let's clear this out. Let me ask you, I've been talking a lot. Have I, are you following? Are you following along as to what I'm talking about here? 
Do you understand the point that I'm making? Everybody, that you've got your keyboard in front of you, just go in the chat box and say yes or no. Right? This, this is what it takes. This is what it takes. Unless you are algorithmic and you're automated, this is what it takes. It is not a matter of finding some liquidity level and selling in front of it or buying in front of it. It's not a matter of getting that super duper add-on plug-in by this guy to it's not that all supports that stuff that supports your execution or decision making process but trading is what i'm talking about so you want to watch this video again because i'm telling you what kind of what level of thinking and commitment you need i'm just being very honest with you uh, about what it's uh, what it's about, okay? And you'll notice that my chart here is very simple. I have a I have a session long volume profile, very important to me because I'm a volume profile person. I have a chart based volume profile because sometimes I want to see the top and bottom of a zipper and how much went on. I'll show you how I use that in a minute. Maybe Bruce, you can remind me if I didn't cover it. This here is a Cloud Notes uh, column. These levels are uploaded uh, to a convergent server, uh, to a convergent server, and these are key areas. The stock zones are key areas I want to interact with the market on. So if I have liquidity within a stock zone, I'm going to engage. If I don't, then I need to lean on something else. Uh, but stock zones are very important. These are mark. These are areas that I expect the market to react at. So you can see the stock zone here. If I extend this stock zone out. This way, you can see that it received a lot of engagement in here, uh, up here, right? These are areas I'm expecting the market to engage at, and these are not, these pre-exist the open of the market. I'm not aware of where the market's going to respond, but, and I'm also, you know, I cover how you create these stock zones and how you generate them and stuff within Convergent for the members. And the goal here is to have you map out what you're gonna do for the day, that's the narrative, and then come in and execute. So let's get back to execution. Key area right here, see how it was just tested again, tested from above, a fight happened right there, broke higher, failed, tested from above, lower high, if I was looking to get short, and I missed this, this would be the area I'd be looking to get short, right in here. Lower high, lower high from the last high and lower high from the most recent high. Look to hit the bid, look to push, look to exit before the next key consolidation area, not exit, but scale. You can see there's a lot of, a lot of dots there, pulls back a little bit, breaks through, then it tests this key area, which again, tested here, tested here, uh, tested here from above. This is the next key area to lean on. So we have a new zipper. This becomes, now the chart shifted, of course, and I got to redraw these things. Now, if I'm short, I'm monitoring this area. I'm going to stay short as long as it doesn't take out this region right here. I'm going to stay short. And my target for the short could be the extended target for the short is 70.50, 70, 70.50, 50. 70, 50. it's nine points away. And as long as the market does not breach the last big zipper that I'm looking at, I'm not interested in getting out. So if it comes back, consolidates, forms a zipper, then that becomes the next area I manage risk with because the market has to work really hard to break through these zipper areas. And, and if it does break through the zipper area, it tells me that, okay, the idea, my idea is probably done, okay? So oftentimes I'll scroll out and I'll see what is next in terms of uh, firm liquidity. Remember, what was the level I just mentioned? Does anybody remember? What was the level I just mentioned? Wow, some of you are listening. Good job. So 70.50, so I, I mentioned that before I scrolled out. What do we have here? Liquidity at 70.50, long lasting liquidity at 70.50. So 
This gives me confidence in my short that I need to hang in there. Market generally moves towards liquidity. I, I can explain the reasons why, but we don't have time for that. Um, so I see that 7050, this confirms to me that this stock zone here is meaningful. The 7050 now becomes two things. One, it is an area I really need to either get out in front of or scale in front of, or it's an area on the first test. In other words, it tests, pulls up, puts in a higher low, starts to rotate up. It's an area that I might be able to get long for a scalp long late in the day, scalp long, because structured trades are only short. Do you guys remember why I said, why I'm saying structured trades are only short? Do you remember that? You remember why I'm saying structured trades are only short? I know a lot of you are probably really lost. It's like drinking out of a fire hose when I go over this stuff. But remember that based on the narrative that the market created early on, the big picture, we are, the plan is that we're only looking short. We're back in the prior day's range. Do not forget this. Do not get caught up in the tick action and forget what the big picture is. Stick with the big picture. Keep the big picture in mind. So structured trades, these are trades that I'm looking for, sizable returns, meaning five to one, eight to one, 10 to one risk reward, or 10R, 5R, 8R. Structured trades are the real trades, and then scalps, are just little anomalies where I'm just trading the flow. I'm trading against the structure. So buying today is scalps. These are gonna have smaller size, smaller risk, smaller reward, and they are just participating in the order flow uh, opportunities as they show up. But structured trades are short based on the big picture narrative. There, in order to in order to be to sustain yourself as a career trader which is really the goal behind convergence, why we created convergence, right? Opening up how you trade as a professional to, to any trader that wants to have it. The goal is to have a robust uh, plan or a robust approach to the market. And in order to have a robust approach to the market, you need to understand your market. That's your edge. That's your edge. And then you need to, and then what you need to do is do is, is use whatever tools you feel help you find your spot within that edge. Okay. My edge has been the same for 15 years. I started looking, I started moving from scalping super high volume, basically market making, to looking at MACDs, CCIs, RSIs, all this stuff, because I needed to move out of the scalping realm because HFT was had taken over scalping. The CME changed the rules so that it wasn't reporting uh, the, uh, the, the quantities on the tape, the fills on the tape the same way. It was breaking them up, which Rhythmic allows you and Bookmap reconsolidates those, by the way, really important. Uh, so I needed to move out of the tick scalping realm and move higher. So I looked at everything, fibs, again, all this stuff, right? Wyckoff, I, it's just exhaust. I was running a prop shop and I, the future of this prop shop was in peril and I needed to find something better. So I moved to market profile, which immediately made sense to me, the auction. And then after a while, market profile, because it was built on time, 30 minute brackets of time, it didn't make sense to me because I was using X Trader and I had this tick volume and it was accurate and XTrader was forming a profile to me. So I started to look at volume profiling when nobody else was talking about it. And so I looked at volume profiling and I looked at how it responded, the market responds at high volume nodes versus low volume nodes, okay? And, and then I started to distill that into a plan and that hasn't changed since, to, since 2005. I don't need to change what I'm looking at all the time. I might change the tools, but the, over, the overall market view remains the same and has remained the same, okay? So what are we looking at right now? Um, actually, I think I'm over my time. So we broke down the pieces and we translated it to the tip of the spear. 
a hunter's spear. We engage with the market. How? If, of course, this, this sell-off is now extended, right? But if I wanted to engage with it, I know that I can potentially lean at 87 with a 90 stop. If that doesn't work, I can lean on 92 with a 95 stop. And if, if, if I'm still convinced that the short, which at that point, I'll probably start re-looking at this and considering that the short's probably not the best thing, uh, the next big area I'd look at, you can see it on the profile over here on the left, the next big area that the market's likely to battle in, this big zipper which formed this uh, high volume node, is likely to be in the 94, 95 area with a stop above 3,300. If it breaks 3,300, guess what? Well, let me ask you, since you've been listening so intently and paying attention, here's your pop quiz before we take questions. If it fails above 3,300, If it fails above 3,300, right? Market comes in, fails above, retests and holds. Where's the next most likely place it'll test according to what you've learned, the crash course you got today in volume profiling? Where was it likely to go? Right on, see, you've been listening. If it fails to get to, to hold this area, and it breaks higher, right? What is the next logical price that it's going to test? Most of you got it. The next most logical price is the high volume node because it's moving from low volume node to high volume node to low volume node to high volume node. So the next big area, so if I get stopped out at 3,300 or above, and I see an opportunity to get long, I'm gonna hold for 3,309, 3,310. That is the area that was accepted before, okay? Uh, inversely, if I am looking for whatever reason to get short up here, you know, in this area right here, 3307, then my stop has to be above 3312. Not because that's the high from this morning, but, that's bec but it's because it's a high volume area. It's the next high, vo the top of the high volume area above above right so that has to be my i can't put my stop in here because this is acceptance it's likely to come up here and chop around but if it breaks above the high volume node then i know i'm wrong because if it was really going to hold this area it should not be able to get through all of this volume okay so anyway uh i apologize i ran a little long um are there any questions uh, bruce that i need to address before we skip out of here um, I think uh, some uh, there's tons of questions in here. I've been answering most of them uh, and, and trying to answer them um, for you. But um, a few questions on the um, stop iceberg tracker. Uh, if you're looking at the uh, market by order data and if there's any sort of confluences that you're getting from that. I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't use it. Uh, you could see it's turned off. I don't really use it. And here's here's why I don't want to talk about it. I have not put in the work, and it's hours and hours and hours of work. I have not put in the work to understand how I can use that as an edge. And so my preference, as it always has been, is to not talk about, not show something I don't use, because then I just become a salesman as opposed to a trader, right? So that's why it's turned off. I normally have it turned on. I normally look at it, but I'm not putting in the effort. I'm a statistical study kind of person. I'm not putting in the effort to extract the data and you know replay it and see how it's responding. So I really cannot address uh, anything to do with the stop and iceberg indicator at this point. Maybe at some point in the future, I can come in and talk about it once I feel like I'm proficient at it, but at the moment, I can't address those. Okay, uh, let's see here. Um, let's see, Ian is asking about, uh, please talk about uh, what structures uh, you use to hide your stops behind. So stops can take one of two, um, one of two tacts. Um, 
Not sure if you've heard the term zipper before, but the market goes from imbalance, where it's it's actively seeking price, it, that that's what trends are, okay, to balance. So balance looks like this. Here's balance. Here's balance. Here's balance. Here's balance. Here's balance. Here's imbalance to balance to imbalance. Okay. When it goes into balance, it forms what I call a zipper, a silly, silly term that I invented. But on a candlestick chart, it looks a lot like this, kind of like your pants zipper, right? And we, there are many things that people call these. They may call it a bear flag and whatnot. And then the market will zipper up and continue or will zipper up and reverse. Um, I look for zippers to support my trades uh, because if, if there is a consolidation where the market showed acceptance, like right here, we could see that there's quite a bit of volume that occurred here. See it on the CVP, okay? And I'm short, let's say I'm short right here, hypothetical, because I think there's a continuation to 70. If I'm short right here and the market manages to walk up to this zipper, trade this volume, and then somehow push through, I am wrong because if this balance has any meaning or the zipper has any meaning or the market lacks strength which is what i'm expecting it has to lack strength for my sell-off my short side to work then it should not be able to break through all this volume and go to the other side if i don't have a zipper for example i got short somewhere and there's no zipper then i use a fixed stop and the fixed stop is based on again the harmonic rotation of the product. How wide is the product trading? And harmonic rotations are a statistical um, thing that I look at and I have a chart that actually gives me that information. Uh, I can pull up any product and on any time frame and look at its harmonics like here. This is the ES using 10 sessions, 10 trading sessions, so a shorter time frame, less than a month, usually a month, in whatever time frame, I can switch the time frame to, oh, no, I want 10 sessions, and I can switch the uh, time frame to one minute. I'm using one minute charts, recalculate, and what it does is it finds a swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high, swing low, uh, gives me the magnitude of those highs and lows, and it gives me a profile, a statistical profile, and I know for the S&P, the most common rotation right now, based on 10 bar, 10 sessions, one minute bars for the high and low, that the harmonic rotation or the ebb and flow of the S&P in the day session, remember 8.30 to 3.15 Chicago time, I'm in Chicago, is 4.75 points. What does that mean? It means that if I'm using a stop, that is inside of 4.75 points, I am well within reach of the, of the S&P just doing its ebb and flow, ebb and flow, ebb and flow. That's, that's a harmonic. I need to be outside. So if I don't have an area to lean against, let's say I got short right here, say at 32.78, then a minimum stop I have to use is five points because I don't have a structure to lean against. But if I'm short against something and there's a zipper there and the zipper has, you know, is within that five point range or less, hopefully less, like two points, then I will use the zipper, the, the lesser of the two. I'll use that zipper because I expect the market's not likely to break to the other side of it. So harmonic rotations are very important because they immediate this this is in real time this is real time information i'm not using an atr which is an average true range and the atr looks back a certain number of periods and takes an average but the market is not a normally distributed entity in fact life everything in life is not normally distributed so an average generally does not describe what's going on the average um asset value of 
uh, in the United States of an American citizen, you know, if 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 everybody makes a hundred grand, if if uh, a million people have an average salary of a hundred grand, and then you put Bill Gates and and uh, Buffett and uh, Musk and uh, whatever, um, the Amazon guy Bezos in there, all of a sudden the average American makes, you know. $380 million. No, they don't. They still make a hundred grand. It's just the data is not normally distributed. It's fat to the left. It's It's got a fat tail in it. And that fa fat tail is going to pull the average towards the middle where nobody exists. There's a huge gap between the average American and the billionaires uh, that represent you know, the tech sector. So I don't like using averages. I like to use whatever the market is yielding in real time. And I'm looking back 10 sessions because I got to look back at something. I got to look back at history and, and I plot it in a profile. And then the profile tells me that, you know, the most common rotation is 4.75, but 70% of the time or one Sigma of, of this, this, um, this kind of look back period, can be up to nine points. So it's not that hard or what we consider normal, which is one sigma or 68% of the data set, can be up to nine points. So technically, I should be using a nine and a half, 10 point stop, technically. But I'm only interested in what's most common because that's what's reasonable. I can't use a nine or 10 point stop on a one minute time frame. that's too, it's too wide. I'd have to cut my size. Wait, wait, I may have to trade a one lot, yes, to, to be able to sustain that and maintain uh, a, a reasonable risk uh, versus the value of my account uh, to, to reduce my risk of ruin. Anyway, I think I'm mixing a lot of different lessons or a lot of different lectures or webinars into one here because of the questions, but you understand my point here. Play, a stop placement is dependent on a lot of things. Your account size, the nature of the product, you know, the tick value of the product, the harmonic rotations of the product that you're trading in the time frame that you're trading it. So, for example, if I use a 15-minute chart, if I switch this to a 15-minute chart, okay, I switch it to a 15-minute chart and recalculate the harmonics, well, the, the trade count will be 20, and that's too low. That's not statistically significant, so I'd have to go back a year. So, if I look at RTH, 15 minute bar chart going back a year i should not be trading with less than a 13 point stop because in a 15 minute bar the rotations are much much bigger much bigger it has nothing to do with the product's volatility it has to do with the fact that you're looking at a much higher time frame so all of a sudden it went from 4.75 or 4.5 whatever it was to 12.75 so if i'm trading a swing or a bigger time frame i gotta have a bigger stop i've got to have a bigger account because every time i get stopped it shouldn't represent more than one percent of my account value i cannot risk more than one percent of my account value per trade otherwise my risk of ruin uh, increases uh, dramatically i won't be able to have that many trades before i have to stop trading because i've run out of money all that that's all stuff that i cover a lot at convergent and many other videos uh, and I can't get into here and I think we're way over our time right Bruce yes uh, there's just a, a few more questions if you if you don't mind um, mm -hmm. uh, if, if you have a few more, more minutes um, so uh, well one question was getting back to you wanted me to remind you as well as someone else asked about it the the um, chart range volume profile uh, in bookmap and how are you using that chart range the cvp column oh yeah okay good good thank you for that let's say i'm examining a i'm examining a zipper uh let's say i'm looking to figure out where in the zipper i need to put my stop what i do is i expand that zipper Where are we? I'm looking for this zipper, right? I expand that zipper and I'm using the CVP to, to see exactly what kind of volume I'm dealing with here. 
This is why I use it. It gives me a very clear view. For example, I wanna know what the bottom looks like. Let's go take a look at what the bottom looks like. Here's the bottom. Using the CVP, I know that this zipper down here at the low has this kind of a distribution. So much of the volume is 74 and a quarter. So if I'm really pinpointing a stop, I would put it beyond that 74 and a quarter on the long, right? I would I'd hate for the market to get through 75 here, the top of the zipper, but really my stop can't be at the top of the zipper and I'd rather not have it be the new low. I know that if it's if it gets through the point of control, the point of control, which is the highest, the point at which there's the highest volume, that's the point of control. Also in statistics, statistics called the mode, I know that if it gets through the mode here at 74 and a quarter and starts trading 74, I know that it's very, very likely to get down to 72, 75. So the CVP to me is more of a, um, a refinement tool, right? So, you know, it just tells me what's happening within a range. So if I look at the last 60 minutes, basically I'm looking at a 60 minute profile when I set it to 60 minutes. Or if I want to know what the profile looks like for the last 15 minutes, I have a 15 minute profile. The SVP is giving me that same information for the entire session from five o'clock Chicago time when the market reopened till now. Uh, and that's that's important, but it's just the, the CVP really just gives me a, a way to refine, like what's going on in here? Okay, I see that there's some volume here that went off at 80 and a quarter and 81 and a quarter. Um, and that's, that's what, you know, that's what it, uh, it traded in real time. And with rhythmic as a data feed, um, the, the data is just incredibly accurate as I check it against my IQ feed and other feeds that I have, it's incredibly accurate. So I can lean, you know, the tick data, I can lean on these volumes that we see here. That's how I'm using the CVP. Okay. Um, so, um, Let's see, there's some other questions. I, I, I tried to answer most of the questions in there uh, for you. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I think we're, we're kind of at the end of uh, uh, the session here. Um, if you uh, want to reach out directly uh, to FT, uh, the um, contact information is in the chat there. I put it in several times for you guys. Uh, it's info at convergentrading.com. Uh, you've got all the uh, website uh, information, the special offers uh, from Bookmap, uh, his websites, et cetera. It's all all in there. Um, any Anything that um, uh, you've got kind of parting words uh, you want to uh, leave for, for everybody, FT? I, I would say that I've had so much experience. Um, I, I straddle the Two, two worlds. I straddled the world of prop trading and like doing this professionally right here in Chicago. And for the last 12 years, I've been exposed to the online, what they call retail, which I hate, I hate that term, the online independent trader world. And I've learned a lot about what goes wrong? Because I've talked to so many traders and we do these uh, group mentoring sessions and stuff at Convergent. And we get to see what everybody's struggling with. And I would say this to you. Don't just trust what somebody's saying. Don't trust what I'm saying. Don't believe me. Verify it for yourself. Observe. Replay charts. One of the best features of Bookmap is the replay feature. Record your live sessions and replay them. And by replaying and replaying, you get to see some stuff that just repeats and repeats. And your job is to sit down, quantify that edge, figure out, okay, in order for me to exploit this piece of information, how much do I need to risk? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, your stop is nothing more than the cost of a ticket. It's like a lotto ticket, but it's not gambling because gambling implies a low, low, low probability of winning. It's not gambling. It's wagering, uh, it's taking a, 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 an educated guess using your money. It's, it's an investment. Uh, you know, it's like starting a business doesn't guarantee you'll make money. Trading is the same. Your stop is the price of the ticket, the price of the ticket in order to see whether you're right or wrong. 
So your goal is to quantify what you're doing, combine that with really just really stringent risk management. You cannot let your emotions get in the way. This is why it's important to understand, and the reason I went through this lengthy process of putting book maps usefulness in its place in my book, right? If you pull up book map on its own, it's this is a formidable tool. I, I wish I had this when I was a prop shop owner. I, I would think that I would have doubled the returns on my traders with this easily. That's just my opinion, because there's so much we used to memorize that you don't need to anymore. We can see, we can examine, we can zoom in. Wish I had this, okay? But if you go and use this on its own and sit here and just beep, pop, beep, pop, beep, you know, bounce in and out of trades, it's really hard to sustain that as an edge. So understand that you need to find some repeat that the market has these repeating patterns because it's 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 a living thing it's like a it's a it's the accumulative it's the cumulative consciousness of all the uh, participants in it the traders in it so humans are have a certain uh, way of thinking and it's reflected in the market it's not all automated like people tell you to yes the volume is op automated because it's executed by computers but the decisions are made by humans which result in computers making decisions based on that. But take that, find something that kind of repeats itself. I discussed one or two things here, and then apply some really stringent, um, really stringent risk control. Because your job as a trader is to be here tomorrow. That's it. My job is to pay up to, to see the next card like on the poker table, try to pay up as little as possible to see the next card, but keeping an eye on the fact that I can't pay too much because I need to come back tomorrow and do this again and again and again. It's unfortunate over the last 12 years, I've seen people make a huge effort and then go out in a blaze of glory, just go out blowing up completely, um, blowing up completely when I felt that they were so close. They've invested a lot of time and they just get tired of it and they just like take a bad trade and then they're like, you know, screw it. I only have a thousand dollars left in my account. I'm just gonna triple down on the, uh, on the micros and just let it ride. It's unfortunate because as soon as you give up that risk control, you're kind of, you're gonna wash away. So pay attention to that, you know, you, you, need, a, you need an edge. You need some risk control and understand that losses are a part of this. Losses are welcome. I'd rather take a thousand dollar loss on a trade than to be stubborn or attached and risk fifty thousand dollars on a trade, and then I can't trade tomorrow. Um, and and use this tool to be able to pinpoint or snipe the locations where you want to trade. You want the the order flow to be on your side. This simplifies the ability to read order flow. So that's it. The the um, I know that uh, you can just I think in order to see oh the bookmap deal I think that's that maybe is no longer valid but to get information on what I'm doing or to ask questions you can just go to convergenttrading.com um, forward slash contact I'll do my best to help out uh, but uh, that's that's the place to find me. Okay, I'll leave you with those words. Sorry, Bruce, we went way over, but I hope I've impacted everybody here positively in some way. That's really the effort I've been making for the last 12 years for the online trader. I just wanna impact your trading in some positive way. It's good for the industry. Take care everyone and uh, thanks for having me on, Bruce. Thank you, FT.